Hello everyone, I'm Bill and welcome to Bill's Odds and Ends. If this is your first time here, be sure and subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified of all of my new videos. Also, give this video a thumbs up as it really helps the channel out. And now, on with the video! The surface of the land roots trap water from the flowing mud, extracting precious nutrients and minerals. These elements, when combined with sunlight, create the diverse living systems of our planet. Living systems is the rainforest, home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich and productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicine, and other elements essential to our lives. In the desert, nature has created a very different, no less beautiful living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert. But over time, rainwater and nutrients have gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil and would one day become home to the American farm. Wow. 
costs to control pests. In the farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. In arid regions, we're learning to produce food on desert sea coasts by developing and planting crops that thrive on salt water. In Japan, we're learning that by mixing leaves and other living materials into our soil, how will we meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems, and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petal, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. One day, many of these lesser-known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. When we mention farming, you probably don't think of fish, but fish farming, or aquaculture, accounts for nearly half of all the seafood consumed globally. Tilapia, bass, and catfish, like the ones you see here, are three of the more popular crops raised by fish farmers. The sustainable system we're using here recycles the water in the tanks. As a result, we're able to save millions of gallons each year. Our small fish farm produces nearly 5,000 pounds of fish each year to serve in restaurants around Walt Disney World. Innovations like this one can play an important role in our efforts to produce valuable harvests and still protect natural resources. While there are more than 50,000 edible plant species in the world, most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. Mm -hmm. 
These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests, like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year. The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, Epcot scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce higher yielding and better quality plants. These greenhouses represent just a fraction of the work being done worldwide to produce bountiful harvests for our growing population. Scientists, farmers, and even backyard gardeners are doing their part to improve the quantity and quality of foods that we all rely upon. Together, we can continue to find more ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then, will we truly be living with the land. On behalf of Walt Disney World, we hope you've enjoyed this unique journey through our living laboratory. If you want a closer look, then check out the behind the scenes walking tour. It's a chance for the whole family to get up close and personal with the plants and growing techniques in our laboratory. Please keep your hands and feet inside the boat and remain seated until the boat comes to a complete stop. And that was Living with the Land. We've done this ride a lot of times and it's always fascinating riding through the greenhouse. But it really was kind of special seeing all of it lit up and decorated for Christmas. It's something you don't see very often. Really enjoyed it and we'll catch you next time. This has been an odd production. Thanks for watching.